In this video, I'm going to cover setting up SLP. In this case, on both of my SLES 10 and 11 boxes, I want to configure them as DAs. And there are a couple of ways to do this. The first way is to go ahead and launch yas 2 slp server That's the command line way to launch this. Well, launch into this window, and you have to excuse the slowness. Um, I'm SSH'd into this, and uh, the resource is running on that ESXi box are a little stretch, stretched a little thin right now. So you can launch it via YAST, or you can configure it manually by going into the SLP.conf, which is in the etc directory. So if you look at the SLP.conf, while we're waiting for that YAST piece to come up over on the right side, um, you'll notice that the SLP.conf has notes for every setting. It's because there is no man page for SLP. Everything minus the logs that SLP keeps and backup uh, logs and things like that, are everything's contained within this one file. So when it comes to configuring SLP, I personally like to come in and edit this file directly. Um, but you can use the uh, plugin if you want to. While we're waiting for the plugin to come in up on the right, I'm going to go ahead and start configuring this. Um, there are a lot of people that do like to copy these lines and paste them down at the bottom and then you know leave the uh, everything else commented up above but just keep all the configuration at the bottom. I personally don't like doing that because everything that I want to read about if I want to read about it is in line right up here so if I want to know about scopes I can read about scopes if I want to know about DA addresses I can read about those and and so on and so forth on the various options so working from the file top to bottom what I'll do is I'll copy this line and then just go ahead and configure this so the very first thing I want to do is configure my scope and in my scope my I'm gonna call my scope by default it's called default as it's described above here so if you don't configure this, you may uh, not see exactly what you expect to, and you may see more than you expect to. They're just different things. So anyway, I'm going to call my scope I like SUSE. And then we're going to go ahead and specify two DAs. As I stated before, let me make a copy of that. As I stated before, the DAs are going to be my SLES 10 and 11 boxes. You can use DNS here, names. However, if your DNS fails, then you have a, another failure, um, another point of failure. So to eliminate DNS as a point of failure with my SLP, I'm going to specify my addresses uh, by IP address. So that is the SLES 10 box that I'm on now and the SLES 11 box you see on the right. So those are going to be my DAs. Um, now I need to t allow these to turn on and BDAs and make a backup of that line just so we can keep the defaults. So now it's going to be a DA. Now the rest of these lines I'm not too concerned about. I'm not going to be changing anything on them um, so I'm going to just uncomment them. But uh, if you do not see some of these options like this DA's backup is true or whatever, if you do not see these um, then you're probably running on older code. It is it is updated code that has this latest stuff in it. And the reason why these were added was because, for instance, on Netware, when it would back up SLP, it would do so to objects within the tree. So if you happen to restart your SLP DA, then upon coming up, the server would query the SLP objects within the tree and be able to populate them and be up and running as soon as it was restarted. On Linux up till recently, if you restarted SLP, all of the configurations, all of the registrations that had occurred um, were wiped out. And you'd have to wait for the, re the services to re-register, which could take up to an hour or whatever the time interval is that the particular service has to register. Um, in order to prevent those kind of loss, two options were added. One is a DA, reg DA sync reg, which is this bottom option right here. And the other one is a backup option. So with the backup option, uh, even if you just have one DA, it's going to back up all of its registrations to this directory at this time interval. And you can, you can read through each of these descriptions if you want. I'm not planning on covering them all here. But it'll back them up so that if you restart SLP, it'll 
read that DA backup file upon boot up and it will basically accomplish the same thing that Netware was doing. It would pull up all of its uh, previous registrations and have everything that was registered up to that point populated and serviceable. And then as re-registrations come in, the information will be updated. The last option here, the DA sync reg, is if you have more than one DA set up, you can set this to true on the DAs and they will talk to each other on regular intervals and they will be able to sync with each other. Um, these are two different methods of basically backing up your SLP information. If you happen to get a power outage and you lose both of your SLP DAs or however many you have, then and you only have this uh, sync option enabled, then you will use, lose your registrations until everything is re-registered. So personally, I like enabling both a local backup option and the sync option. Now the SA specific configuration further down, I'm not going to do anything with, or the network configuration properties. Um, one, one setting that I have had to mess with is the bound interface. There sometimes maybe you have multiple interfaces and you do not want to um, you do not want SLP to listen on a particular interface in my case um, I, I, I'm going to have it listen on all of them so I'm going to leave it but if you had to make that change you'd go ahead and uh, tell it to do it here security I'm not going to mess with tracing and logging if you needed to try to track down an SLP problem you can uncomment all four of these logging options restart your SLP and it will log to a var log SLP D dot log file that does come in handy um, but as far as I'm concerned this this is con red this is configured and ready to go so let's go ahead and uh, restart it and let's just make sure to see if uh, it's set to boot up, which it is. So SLP is running on this server. Now, again, here's the GUI piece on the right-hand side. You can go ahead and configure the exact same options. I can make it a DA server. Um, however, you notice that I'm, I've got a little bit of a delay. Um, I'd have to put in the addresses here. I can change the scope. Everything that I can modify in the file manually, I can do here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close this though because there is a sluggishness problem going on right now with uh, my remote session. And I'm going to edit this file manually. So let's go ahead and do the exact same steps. We're going to declare a scope. my addresses go ahead and enable my DA, my backup and sync options that should be it, let's go ahead and restart SLP and double check to make sure that it is set for start on boot up. Which it is. And you notice I used a different option there um, to check that, which is fine. Um, all right, so now if we want to query SLP, let's go ahead and use SLP tool, find servers, service colon is going to default to a service of directory dash agent and we're going to list our DAs here so we can do this on the other side tool too and I doubt they've been up long enough to have any particular services register but if I do have anything register already in my environment in my environment it'll be fish which you do so I, I see a service there called that perhaps SSH and I have that, perhaps domain. And you notice that the registrations that I have are actually all for the SLES 11 box. I do not see any for the SLES 10 box yet. And this one also shows the same information. They may have already synced. 
and the longer this stays up and the more serv services you have uh, loading for this particular scope especially if I had a, a larger environment with many workstations many servers different services you're going to see these various fields get populated and if you needed to troubleshoot anything again you can go into the slp.conf come down to this logging section which is almost right at the bottom you can uncomment all four of these fields or or whatever you want now normally without a backup option or the sync option when I did that restart it would have lost all of this information until those services were resynced. Um, if you go into the SOP reg D directory, there's another SOP directory, SOPD directory. Our DA backup file is there. If I cat that, you can see some of the registrations that have occurred, and these things were backed up. Now back to the logging. If you need to go look at your logging, you can go into var log and look at your SOPD.log. And here you can see incoming registrations and other information, depending on what you're trying to track. Um, so you can look at this trace message in. Um, here's our response from a previous response uh, where our message is going out. And this actually correlates quite well with a land trace. If you were to go into your land trace, you should be able to see a registration come in, and it's going to have a service type of directory agent and um, you're going to see this XID and that will actually match up in a land trace too. So this is log is helpful if you're trying to troubleshoot. Um, otherwise go ahead and leave your logging turned off so you're just not filling up logs. Anyway that's a basic setup of SLP DAs with backup and sync options and I hope that you found it useful. Thank you for watching.